of my full attention worthy of all my praise worthy of my affection worthy Lord I say Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Cross Time with Pastor Curtis. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson, and I'm glad to be here in the studio with you in our virtual classroom setting online in our study of righteousness from this little booklet that uh, we put together some four years ago or so, and it's called Let's Talk About Righteousness, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're in a classroom setting online again, let me say that, so that we'll understand that, uh, you know, this is an online course that we're giving, and uh, this is going to be part four today. I hope you would uh, get your copy of this. Let's crosswaychurch.com. It's a little small fee, basically what it takes to print these. So I encourage you to get your copy, follow along with us, and God is going to do great and mighty things among us. I can guarantee that because all of His words are in righteousness, Proverbs 8 and 8, and His righteousness is revealed in the gospel. Romans 1, 16 and 17. So the focus is always going to be the gospel, no matter what the doctrine is we're looking at in the Bible. It's got to be gospel truth, no matter what doctrine we're talking about, no matter what we're teaching from the Word of God, we're going to have to have gospel truth. Why is that? Because as I've already said, Romans 1, 16 and 17 tell us that the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. And Proverbs 12 and 17 tell us that he that speaks truth shows forth righteousness. So there's no view, there's no hearing, there's no involvement, no partaking of the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus if we are not hearing the gospel truth. Amen. The truth of the gospel. Again, that all of the Word of God holds the context. That is the context of all the words of God. All His words are in, that's a location, righteousness. And so the more we understand this, the more we're going to uh, see the Holy Spirit revealing to us things that we never even imagined we could understand, even the unfolding of many things we've never known before. It's all about and all found in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say, while you're getting your Bibles and your pencil and your paper ready for today's session, how great of a time we had in Connecticut with the Andre family and Sister Catapano there, Sister Laura, and uh, just the fellowship that we had at worshiping the Lord and digging into the scriptures and fellowshipping together. And we just had a marvelous time. And when the Lord sends us out to these places, we, we find out, you know, uh, that there are many people in those areas that claim they know this truth, and, but, but, but they, don't, they won't come to the meetings unless it's some popular person, which is, is very revealing in and of itself. And so uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be able to go and hold meetings like this far away from here, 1,800 miles. And, uh, but, but I'm also uh, praying that these people who would travel uh, to hear uh, some other preacher that's more popular than other preachers, if they, that their excitement and their zeal would literally just be 
for the gospel, the message of the cross, in spite of who it is delivering the message, because it really is never about the messenger. It's about the message. And if we, if we get that turned around, then our lives are going to be turned around. So I'm very appreciative for the invite to come to the region we were at there in Branford, Connecticut, and I'm very uh, excited about what God did there and what He's continuing to do there. And God's got people here and there all over the world, and I'm thankful for all those who are where they are. And we're just praying that if you don't have a cross-preaching, cross-centered church to go to, that God would send someone and, and raise a church up there, wherever that might be, because it is his desire that this message be on the lips of all his ministers, and I'm thankful to know that today. Well, praise the Lord. Let's get ready to dig in here today, part four of this Let's talk about righteousness. Again, we're coming out of this Let's Talk About Righteousness booklet. You can get yours on the website. Click on the store icon. Go in there. Buy your copy so you can be ready uh, by Friday. If you'll do it right now, you might have it by Friday, and you can join us along with us and just have a great time just like you were in a classroom. Hallelujah. Except this way, you get to go view it at your own convenience and go through it. So here we are, and we're on page two down at the bottom of, of our little booklet. And uh, down here, what I do is I put the date right here where we're going to begin the next session, and this is where we are. And let me just read this beginning today. The fruit of all biblical faith is righteousness, or it is not biblical faith which our God will honor or reward. And remember that, and we'll see it today. It is always the righteousness of faith. Righteousness is the fruit of all faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get that? And all God's words or found in his righteousness. They have to be because th the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God is it comes only through righteousness. And I've taught this several times and it gets more amazing to me every time to see the reality of this and to see just how many people reject it and won't believe it. And we'll get into what I'm talking about here in just a few minutes. But before we do get that far, let's look here at the scripture for today, Romans chapter 4, verse 13. Get your Bibles and go ahead and turn there, smartphone, Bible, whatever you got. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he, speaking of Abraham, should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That's uh, the faith that Abraham exhibited in the gospel that was preached to him. You do understand that, right? Abraham had to hear the gospel of the promise, the promise of the gospel, the promise of a redeemer, the promise of a savior. And we know that because Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that Abraham just wasn't believing God, believing God, just an overall statement, well, I believe God. No, Abraham, the Bible tells us, uh, let's go see if we can find it since it is a Bible study. Hebrews chapter 4, I believe, I believe it is. Let's look for it here. Uh, I might not be able to find it. Uh, let me see. It talks about wherever it's at, and if you know, you can put it in the comments about, let me see, let me go back. Maybe it's in Romans chapter 4 uh, where we are, but Yes, here it is. I'm sorry. It's not Hebrews 4. It's Romans 4. Sorry about that. It's right here in the same chapter where we're at. But look at, look at verse 4 because this is important for the child of God to know that it's not, it wasn't just Abraham believing there was a God and that God, God can do anything. That's not what God 
honored Abraham with the imputing righteousness unto him for. We see here in Romans chapter 4, and again, I'm sorry for sending you over to Hebrews 4, but there's some great stuff in Hebrews 4 too uh, concerning all this. But verse 4 in Romans 4, Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Meaning, if you're working for your salvation, and that means you think you have to do anything to be saved, then you have a mindset of, of law, works, and you owe me, God, because of what I did. That's, that's, and that's, that's not grace. It can't be grace. But to him that works not, but believes on him, here it comes, that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let's back up again and read uh, verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Keep reading. Now unto him that works, works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now the focus of the cross is right there for those who have eyes to see, to see, and for those who have ears to hear, to hear. Him who justifies the ungodly. God justifies no one outside of their heart trusting in the promise of his Redeemer, his Son, and what he did at Calvary. There is no justification outside of the blood of Jesus. So here we see what Abraham was believing what he was longing for, what he was trusting in. So we go back down to verse 13 where we are today, and it says, for the promise that he should be heir of the world. And let's stop there for a minute. Abraham is the heir of the world. He's the heir. He, he has inherited the world. Do you know uh, paradise where everybody in the old covenant went who was a believer that God could justify them as ungodly people and make them righteous in his eyes was called paradise. It was also called Abraham's bosom because to be there, you had to have the faith that Abraham had. To be there, you had to have the faith that that Abraham had. The New Testament says Abraham is the father of our faith. And, and we understand this because Abraham had faith and Abraham was shown how this was going to come to pass when God told him to go up on the mountain and offer his son. And right before Abraham literally killed Isaac, God intervened and said, stay your hand, Abram. I, I, I God is going to offer himself. Get that now. God is going to offer himself a sacrifice. And Abram turned and he saw a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. The horns of a ram speak of his authority. Jesus came in his authority to go to the cross in the place of all us sinners. Think about that. Abraham saw that. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Well, that's where he saw the day of Jesus. Glory be to God. That's good news. So Abraham is the heir of the world, but not through the law. Get this now. Not through the law. Why? Because the law is not of faith, but through the righteousness of faith. And you know, there, there's, there's a lot that could be said. I have a whole sheet uh, about the law. The law is not of faith. The law works wrath. I mean, the list goes on and on as to why the law cannot save. The law cannot keep except keep us under bondage. It cannot keep us in the things of God. Only the righteousness of faith can do that. And let's talk about this for a minute today because the, 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 what we need to know is that the promise Abraham was given, faith came with the promise, but Abraham, listen to me very carefully, Abraham had to mix 
the faith that came with the word. Abraham, Abraham was responsible for believing that. And when our hearts, our hearts, not our lips, but when our hearts believe the word that comes, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the word of God, faith comes with the word of God. And it's up to us to mix the faith with the word that brings the faith so that that faith we're mixing with the word can move us into the obedient experience of the word. Get that now. That's very important that you know that. And let's, let's, let me see where this is at. Uh, I got it here. Uh, I had it a while ago. Uh, let me see here. Let's go to Hebrews. That, that might be what, what I was uh, uh, confused about a while ago. I'd done been in Hebrews. And uh, here it is, Hebrews chapter 4. Let's look in this fourth chapter of Hebrews and read uh, the first couple of verses here. There is an explanation here of what I just offered you that you desperately need to see and know and understand because faith is not some mystical, magical something. Faith comes when the Word comes. If the Word's not coming, faith can't come. That, that's important too. If, if the Word is not coming, there's nothing else that can bring faith. Come, faith comes by hearing. I'm quoting Romans 10 and 17 to you. If, if the Word is not coming, then there's nothing that can bring faith. And it has to be the Word in its righteous context. That's so important. If it's not the Word of God in its righteous context, th th faith can't come with it. Remember, all God's words are in righteousness. And, 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 and righteousness is, is the context of all of God's words. And, and, and let's look at this before I get further. I'm wanting to get somewhere uh, quicker than, than I need to. So let's just look here for a minute. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And being mixed with faith it is a commingling. It's to assimilate. And, and listen, it says in verse 3, for we which have believed. Do you see, here, here is what I'm talking about earlier. If we are believing, then that means, according to the Scriptures, that we are mixing the faith that comes with the Word, with the Word, and faith is what moves us. You need to, you need to know this. Faith is not going to move you by you declaring the word. Faith is going to move you by you believing the word in your heart. And, and you'll see in a few moments where we're going. And look at this. The, all of God's words are in righteousness. That's why the church is in big trouble today because we're quoting, declaring, and decreeing the Word of God, but there seems to be nothing going on other than the act of that. There's no uh, repercussions of that. There's no, there's no fruit of what should be happening by faith there other than what people claim is just going on within their little four walls of their little get-togethers. My friend, faith moves us us into the obedient will of God for our lives. And so let's look at this one more time before we move on. We're told here that we should uh, let us therefore fear. Do you see that? Let us fear. That word is, is very important. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 11 
and see if we can find uh, by faith, let's see, Noah, verse 7, by faith, get this now, by faith, wait a minute now, how does faith function? Faith comes by hearing. The word you hear, the, the word of God you hear brings faith with it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, you don't have faith if you don't have no word to put it in, in the Christian faith. <clears throat> and if you're not hearing the word, you don't have any, any place to put your faith. Think that. Think about it. You got to hear God before you can believe God. And, and God said, in the last days, I'm speaking by my son. So you got to hear God through his son. That means through faith in what his son did. Because that's where, at the cross, is where Jesus did the work of righteousness, Isaiah 32 and 17, and Romans 3, 26 and 27, tell us that's where the righteousness of God was declared from the cross, from the shedding of his blood. And Romans chapter, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, at the end of that chapter, we're told that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the one who knew no sin but became our sin offering for us. You need to remember that. But watch this uh, uh, verse 7 here in Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah. Get that? By faith, Noah. Being warned of God. Did you hear that? God talked to Noah. God said something to Noah. We know what it was. I'm going to flood the earth. Build an ark. Get this now. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Get that. Moved with reverence. Moved with a value of what God said to be true. It moved him. Did you see that? Let's look at this again. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. See, there's never a word that comes that has something outside the perimeters of our salvation. If we're to be working out what God is working in and we learn what God is working in so that we can work out, it's what we're working out is our own salvation is what the Bible says. And a lot of things going on today in the church, a lot of wishy-washy stuff, wanting to go out and walk on water, wanting to do this, wanting to do that, hadn't got anything at all to do with where God has you right now and what He's desiring to see in your life right now that's going to require faith moving you through fear to carry out the will of God by His Spirit. See, the Spirit of God's not going to move except through the Word you're hearing. I need to say that again. The Spirit of God is not going to just mystically and magically carry you along, floating along. He's going to guide you into all the truth He can teach you and impart into you. And, you know, that's just here a little and there a little. But thank God there can be here a little and there a little, and we can be growing. So by faith, Noah being warned of God, God spoke to Noah, told him of, of things that Noah had not seen yet. They hadn't happened yet, but they're coming. And Noah was, by faith, he was moved with fear and began to prepare an ark under the direction of the Lord. So let's go back now uh, to Romans chapter 4, and we'll see here in this 13th verse that Abraham did not become the heir of the world through the law. You do understand that when Abraham, came, when Abraham died and his life ended here on earth, the law still wasn't there. The law came way after Abraham. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's 12 sons, all, you know, going into Israel. Moses, some, what, 400 years or so later came. God sent Moses 
get them out, out in the world, then comes the law. Way before this, God had already imputed his righteousness unto Abraham. Why? Because Abraham heard the gospel. Abraham believed, mixed faith with the promise he gave. That's called believing. You're not believing unless you're mixing faith with what you claim you're believing. And my friend, that moves you into the obedience will of God in that which you're hearing. The, the church needs to wake up today and hear what I'm saying right now because there's a lot of what we're calling we believe this and we believe that, but we're not being moved by the Spirit of God. We're not being, unless you're being moved by the Spirit of God to be found before God obedient in the will of God, we are not believing. That's why the Bible said there in Hebrews 4, let us fear lest a promise being left of us. We seem to come short of it. Listen, if the Word of God is not moving you by the Spirit of God into the obedient will of God for your life, my friend, you might need to take a step back and say, what have I really got going on spiritually? Do, do I just go along in life even though I go to church every week? What really am I doing here? I need to be like Noah. I need to be like David. I, I need to be more than anything. I need to be like Jesus. Jesus was constantly being moved by faith. Matter of fact, there was never a time in his life that he was not being moved by faith. And even Jesus feared. Get that. Isn't that? Let's go look for it. You know, Hebrew, isn't it Hebrews 5? I'm guessing again. No, it might be Hebrews. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me look it up. Uh, hmm. Let, up. Let's see. Let's see. There's a lot to look at. The word Hebrew. It was Hebrews five. My goodness, I doubted myself. I do it all the time, and rightly so. Hebrews five, chapter seven. Listen, this is now talking about Jesus now in this word fear. See, that's what's lacking in the church. That w Without the fear of the Lord, we can decree and declare and, and claim all sorts of things going on. God doing all sorts of things and nothing changing in our life without the fear of the Lord. Look at the, the testimony of Jesus when he was on the earth here in Hebrews 5 and 7. Who in the days of his flesh, Jesus living on the earth in his in flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that, heard in that, he feared. Get that. He reverenced God's plan more than any plan he might uh, come up with as the man that he was. Father, is there any way this cup can be taken from me? Is there any way we can do this some other way? And that Jesus fearing God, fear having the fear of the Lord. Remember, I believe it's Isaiah. Write it down and look, look later. My tongue's not wanting to work right either today. Isaiah 11 2 list the seven attributes of the seven spirits of God. Names, really, the seven spirits of God and their seven, the, the fullness, if you will, of the Spirit of God. One of those seven is the fear of of the Lord. And Jesus had the fear, the Holy Spirit guiding him every moment of his life. And one of those attributes and characteristics of the Holy Spirit is the fear of the Lord reigning in the heart of Christ. And this is why Christ could end up saying in his greatest temptation of all in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thy will, Father. Imagine that. That was a temptation to the degree of sweating blood. We know nothing about that depth of of 
of of testing and 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 being tempted and and tried we know nothing about we've been tempted we've been tried uh, but but let me say compared to Jesus we know nothing of the matter he is was far beyond what we can fathom but i wanted to point out here that Jesus also just like Noah feared just like we're being told in Hebrews chapter 4 let us therefore fear let us reverence God above family members above money above any position fame that we may have achieved fame that we may have uh, been given to whatever it is let us therefore fear reverence God thy will O God not mine oh let us reverence God and let me say it again today this faith that that Abraham had was the righteousness of faith that means the gospel they heard was the gospel that declares men righteous as it justifies them that's what happened to Abraham is it not God took the faith that Abraham mixed with the promise and because he did God called that believing and God imputed righteousness unto him because it was the righteousness of the faith that he mixed when the promise came to him did you hear that? It was the righteousness of the faith that he heard through the gospel that he mixed with the gospel in his heart. God called that believing. And when God sees that, you actually believe what he says. And, 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 and to the point that this is, this is believing to God. That when you believe, when you take the word that's given you, like Noah and Abraham we're talking about today, the word that came brought faith with it. It's the, the righteousness of faith. If we take the faith that comes with the word, Paul even said the word we preach, is it not the word of faith? It is the word that brings faith with it. And God saw Abraham, God saw Noah, God saw all those who've been saved taking that faith that came with the gospel and in their heart mixing that faith with the gospel. God calls that believing. And my friend, you cannot be doing that and the Spirit of God not be moving you. You cannot be in that experience and not become saved. You cannot remain, abide in that experience and not be living saved. This is why the preaching of the cross, the focus of the Lamb, is of utmost importance. It's why God forbids that we boast in anything other than the cross because it's only through the cross of Christ that all of his words are going to be imparted into our hearts and made a lamp for our feet and a light to our path. Outside of that context, that context of righteousness, we can declare Psalms 119, 105 till we're blue in the face for a hundred years. But, and nothing's going to happen because we quote that. But when God's word is in the context of the living word of God and what he, Jesus, did as the Lamb of God, then my friend, the path that God put our feet on will lie up and God promises in Proverbs 8, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Proverbs 4 and 18, that his path, the path of the righteous will shine more and more unto that perfect day. We need to understand these things. This is the simplicity of the gospel right here. You hear it? It's why two men can sit there and hear the same gospel message. They both heard it. They both gave their attention to it. But one took that he heard and mixed faith, the faith that came with it. Faith comes, you didn't have it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word 
hearing by the word. And that's what God calls believing. And the other guy, he heard the same message, but he didn't mix the faith that came with it. He didn't believe it in his heart. And one left lost and the other left and, and began to be used by God and changed daily by God and, and, and used by God in phenomenal ways simply because he said, I believe the cross of Christ is the answer. I believe the cross of Christ is that which made me righteous. The very work that Christ did on the cross by dying for me, by suffering for me, by shedding his blood for me is where I have found the place of my righteousness in him. I don't have any that's not filthy and like dirty rags. So I'm letting go of all of me, mine, and ours, and I'm taking a hold of what Jesus is. It's his righteousness, and I'm holding on to him because he's the one that did the work. He's the one that offered me what he has. He's the one who invited me to partake of what is his. And so I'm just keeping my faith in him and what he did for me at Calvary. But let's look at this again because it's the righteousness of faith. There is no, there, there, there is no, uh, let's look at 2 Peter. I told you we'd do it. Let's go do it while it's on my mind. 2 Peter chapter 1. Those of you who follow this ministry and others like this ministry who God has brought back to their first love, their first faith, and their first works, meaning the focus of the cross of Christ, have heard this before, and but we can't hear it enough that faith comes through righteousness. I hope you've gotten that out of what we've already said, but here's a Bible verse in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 that just flat out says it. It just flat out has it spoken to us, written down in the Word of God. Let's look at it together. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's make a point here. The Holy Spirit knew him being God, that he needed to add, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because if he didn't, then we might think we're righteous by what we do, or righteous by what we all agree on, or righteous by anything we think we can do. But the Bible says that this like precious faith we have obtained, that means we didn't have it. That means we didn't have, if you, if you obtain something, then you have to obtain it from somewhere because you didn't have it. We were recently up north and we wanted to go into a national park. To get in, I had to have something I did not have. I had to have a, a park pass. So I had to go in a building and I had to go obtain a pass that I previously did not have. But when I left that building, I had that pass that would allow me to enter into the national park. You need to think about this. Let's look at this. To them that have obtained, let's just hone in on this word. To, to obtain something is a verb. It's an action word. It's, it, 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 that means there's when you obtain this, there was some action going on. Think about this now. There, there, when, listen, when you became a Christian, when you were born again, there was some action taking place there, my friend. You didn't understand it. We didn't really know what the action consisted of, and we weren't able to theologically and scripturally really explain it, but we, we knew something happened. There was some action going on there. Because, and we could talk about this because of many, many things happened in the born-again experience, but what I want to bring out right now is that it was an action 
action. We were obtaining something. Something was happening. We were, the old man was being put to death. The old nature was becoming uh, inoperable. Christ was formed in us. We received the Spirit of God. We were justified, sanctified, washed, hallelujah, and the list goes on and on. There was action taking place because it was the operation of God. And I promise you that was an act of God on our part of simply believing with the heart uh, that that which we were hearing, which is God calls that mixing the faith that came with the word that we heard with the word. And what happened? We were born again. We were born again. Think about that. That's powerful to me. But, but what I want to point out here in this first verse of 2 Peter chapter 1 is that we have obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God. And let me say it very clearly today. Faith cannot come ever at all if it doesn't come through the righteousness of God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. And when he said that in John chapter 15, verse 5, he was speaking of bearing fruit. Does it not require faith for us to bear fruit? Yes, it does. But Jesus said, you can do nothing. You can bear no fruit without me. Think about this now. It requires faith for any fruit to be bare. But Jesus said, you can't do anything without me. So Jesus has to be involved. How is Jesus involved in my life here and now? Well, number one, by his spirit. But you got to know this. It's by the faith of Jesus Christ that we live. The, the faith that we've had measured unto us, Romans 12, 3, is that measure we've obtained through the righteousness of God. The Old Testament saints didn't have what we have today, and the Bible plainly says that. They couldn't even go to heaven. They had to go to paradise. You and I, the moment these bodies lay down, they die. The, the moment these bodies are dead, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah. We go straight to heaven in an eye wink of time when we leave this body behind. But let me say this again. We're not leaving it too quick today. We're talking about the righteousness of faith. Think about that. We are and can only live by the righteousness of faith. That, that's, isn't that what happened when you believed with the heart in the gospel that you heard? You didn't know it, you couldn't explain it, but God was revealing His righteousness to you through the gospel. It's the only place it's revealed. It's the, it's the only place He can reveal all His words to you because all the scriptures are about Jesus. If you hadn't come to that conclusion, now's a good time just to take a second and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've not known this. Lord, I'm sorry that I might have heard this in the past, but I didn't understand it, so I really, I just, I, I continued to keep seeing your, your scriptures in the light outside of your son who claims to be my light. Lord, I'm sorry for using your words out of their righteous context because all of God's words are in righteousness. It's the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our light, listen carefully, it's the righteousness of Christ that makes Him our light, that makes God's Word our light. Isn't that correct? Let's look at a powerful scripture. Hope you're taking notes today. I hope you are. Psalms 37, 6, is that where I'm going? Yes, it is. Psalms 37 and 6, uh, And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. Get this now. And he shall bring forth your righteousness 
as the light and your judgment as the noonday. That means now your judgment is righteous judgment. Your judgment is as bright and clear as things are in the noon hour when the sun is at its highest peak and it's the brightest part of the day. Security, stability is what you have through righteous judgment. Confusion is gone. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. Doesn't this help us understand what the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 1 when we're told, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Think about that. that that'll help some of you who are really pressing in and you want to know the truth, it'll help you understand that who Jesus became to us at Calvary, one of the things, 1 Corinthians 1.30, that He was made to us was righteousness. This is the light of God's Word, His righteousness. All God's words are in righteousness, and if that's not the avenue and the context in which we hold them, they can be no light to our path because the path is a path of righteousness that we're on because of the word of righteousness that brought forth the righteousness of faith that came when we heard the gospel. See the simplicity of that. The reason we turn our head sideways when we hear these things is because we've believed so much that's not right. Think about that. Let me read this paragraph here. There's a lot more that could be said. I hope you really wrote down 2 Peter 1 and 1. Righteousness, the faith that comes that we've obtained, that keeps coming if we'll keep hearing the Word, can only come through righteousness and our Lord Jesus Christ. He has to be involved. He has to be involved. We can't bear fruit. That means we can't live by faith if He's not involved. And His involvement in our lives is through our faith in what gave Him entrance when He moved in the first time. And that was our faith in His death. Think about it, my friend. If you get off all caught up in the focus on the Holy Spirit and the focus on all the decreeing and the declaring of things that are not the righteousness of God, you're going to end up very confused and very hurt. There are millions in our nation right now that were brought out of places of worship that don't believe in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in speaking in other tongues. They, they don't believe in what the Bible plainly teaches as for the New Covenant Church. But they, they come out of those churches like that. They wanted more, but then they got in these places that I, I speak from experience. They got in these places that the focus is the Holy Spirit. Well, that's never the Holy Spirit's focus himself. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Everywhere where the focus is the Holy Spirit, there's a blur of confusion taking place. And boy, they're skilled. They're very skilled at speaking the Word, but in its unrighteous context, meaning outside the context of the Lamb slain. You need to hear that. Faith can only come through righteousness the first time you believed. And after you've been born again for 50 years, if faith comes, it's going to come by hearing and hearing by the Word. But it's going to be when you hear and mix the faith, the faith in the Word that you hear, it's going to produce the righteousness of faith. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Abraham believed in that which would allow God to make him righteous, which was what? That God would justify him as an ungodly man, a sinner. Think about that. 
You say, well, I'm a Christian. I, I was saved years ago. I I'm no longer ungodly. Well, you still need the cross, my friend. The Bible says in the New Testament that God delivers us, not people, not people, God delivers us unto the death of His Son always. Why? Because it's the place where you hear righteousness decreed and declared unto you. It's the place righteousness is imputed unto you. It's the place and the only place you see and have clarity of the path God set you on. It's your only hiding place. It's the only place you can find grace in Christ Jesus because we're told to be strong that's in the grace of of the Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. We're told to be strong that's in be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. And my friends, I hope you know that grace only reigns through righteousness. Let's go look at that today. Romans 5, verse 21 tells us that exact truth. <clears throat> Romans 5 and 21 that as sin has reigned unto death. That was us before we were born again. The sin nature was reigning in us, and because of that we were dead in our sins and trespasses. Even so, my grace... Watch this now. I hope you got your highlighter in your hand, your notes. Even so, my grace reign through righteousness. Through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you hear that? Grace reigns through righteousness. Grace reigns, but grace doesn't just reign. Grace has a place it reigns through righteousness. That means the work of righteousness, Jesus, carried out on the old rugged cross. These, this truth and this focus, my friends, is what, is what allows the Holy Spirit to do in our lives what needs to be done, which is what? The will of God. Th this truth of staying planted where God planted you when He saved you. This path, remaining on this path that God set your feet on when He saved you. In this race that God set before you when He saved you, there is not a, another avenue. There is not another focus. That's, again, that's why God says He forbids that we boast in anything other than the cross of Christ. It's God's focus always has been because God's focus mainly is who He is. And nothing like the cross of Christ reveals who God is to us. Think about that, my friend. If you disagree with that, you probably need to get saved. Nothing, nothing reveals God like the cross of Jesus Christ. Think about that. Watch this now. And let me read this note I wrote down before the teaching session. Grace reigns through the righteousness that brought faith to us. Think about that. The righteousness of faith. Grace reigns through the righteousness that brought faith to us. It's the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. What He did by faith is the faith that we now live by. He dealt to us a measure of that faith. Remember, we're joint heirs with Christ. We brought nothing. If we have faith, it's a gift from God. The Bible says, I think Peter wrote it, we, we can't believe God except by Christ. That's in, that Peter wrote that. We can't believe God except by, except through Christ. 
That means I, I didn't have anything to offer. God offered me the gospel. With the gospel came the faith that I needed, but I had to mix that faith with that gospel I heard, meaning I had to believe it in my heart, but I didn't have the faith. I had the ability to believe, but I didn't have the faith. The gospel brought the faith. Somebody said glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank God for the truth. I could believe anything I wanted to. But when I heard the gospel, I took the faith that came with the gospel, the faith of the gospel, what I'm told to be found with you among the church striving together for the faith of the gospel. The, the gospel was presented. It brought the faith I needed, but I had to believe with the heart, which is explained in Romans 4, is taking that faith, that gospel faith, and mixing it with the faith in my heart. God brought the ingredients to me, but I had to believe it with my own heart. And when I did, that was mixing the faith that came with the gospel. That's how I obtained it. I didn't have it. I could just as easily believe in Muhammad or, or Confucius or Allah. I can believe in anything, <clears throat> but I heard the gospel. And when I heard the gospel, it had faith with it that the promise was that if I believe the gospel, then the, the then that being I could be saved by grace through the faith of the gospel. And when I believe that with this heart that could believe anything, when I believe that, God imputed unto me his righteousness, the righteousness of his son. Hallelujah. And he gave me that measure of the faith of Christ, the measure, hallelujah, of the faith of the gospel. The, the righteousness of faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Isn't that powerful? Grace reigns through the righteousness that brought faith to us. We've already seen that it's the righteousness of God through Christ at Calvary that brought righteousness to us. And we saw Peter writing, 2 Peter 1 and 1, that we obtain that faith through that righteousness of of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see the simplicity of that. Uh, oh, the simplicity, the simplicity of that is so beautiful. Hallelujah. To be deceived and to turn away from that truth, I'd have to be listening to someone giving ear to some man who was trying to control me some way for some reason. And I for some reason he would hold me, hold me in a place. I refuse to be held by any man, but I choose to be held by the Spirit of the living God on the path of righteousness, the righteousness of faith. Glory be to God. Let's read this paragraph since we don't have but about three and a half minutes under Romans 4 and 13. Even the measure of faith given to all of God's people, Romans 12, 3, was obtained through the righteousness of God in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 1 and 1. That's why you need this booklet. What we're teaching is in the book. You have it written down to look again, or you can listen to this again. Through what he did for us by tasting death for us all by the grace of God. Remember, Hebrews 2 and 9 tells us that. There it is written there for you. The grace and truth which Christ brought with him, John 1, 14, reigns exclusively through the righteous work he did at Calvary, which is the work he carried out for us on the cross. Isaiah 32, 17, Colossians 1, 20. It's all right here. Let us today discard all of those things which have lured our lustful flesh away from a determination to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. For through faith there alone are we separated from from the world and it from us, Galatians 6, 14. And can the name of Jesus be exalted and our heavenly Father glorified? God's not receiving glory unless we're giving him glory through faith 
in the death of Jesus. I don't have to say I give you glory. I'll give him glory when he sees my heart yielded to the truth of his son's work at Calvary. Remember this as we close out today. Let's turn over there and look at it. The last book of the Bible, verse uh, chapter 5, verse 12. Revelations 5 and 12. Watch this. Uh, the angel singing, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive. Mm. Oh, Jesus already was all these things, but to become the distribution point, the house that Proverbs 15, 6 tells us, I love Sister Laura Catapano in uh, uh, Connecticut, uh, sent me this beautiful picture here. She painted and wrote a scripture, this Proverbs 15, 6. Guilford, Connecticut's where she lives. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. My goodness, there's treasure here. Jesus is that house. Jesus is that temple. He told them, you tear a temple down, I'll rebuild it in three days. And they said, it took our fathers 40-something years to build this temple. How are you going to build it in three days? The Bible says Jesus spoke of his body. Jesus is the house of God that is our righteous place, hallelujah. In him we dwell and move and have our being and have access to all the promises of God. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Watch this now, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. If my faith is not in if my faith is not deliberately and consciously from my heart where faith functions or it doesn't function at all in the death of Jesus, then I can say I give you glory till I'm blue in the face, but God only receives glory through faith in what he did in his son at Calvary. That's it. You mean God doesn't, God's not glorified by what I do? If what you're doing is not through faith in the death of Jesus, absolutely he's not. Jesus had to be slain as the lamb to receive these things we read about. And the only place of distribution is through our faith in him being slain. Moment by moment. And you need to understand that. If Jesus spent his life on you, living a sinless life for you and laying that sinless life down as the sin-bearing offering for you, is that not worth you spending your moment-by-moment -moment life on Him? Well, I choose to believe it is. I don't do it perfectly. I'm far from it, but it is my goal. It is to be found before my God, striving together with the saints of God for the faith of the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's been a great session today. I hope you got lots of notes. And more than that, I hope the Lord wrote notes on your heart as the new covenant says he would do. He would write his law in your heart and on your mind. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. I pray His touch be upon all of us today, body, soul, and spirit, and that He would fill our hearts with the prosperity of His Word. I pray that it would be His Word that's prospering in our hearts and that our eyes would turn away from all other prosperity and only be found trembling at His Word and the prosperity of His Word in our hearts, bringing forth the fruit that pleasing, that's pleasing unto Him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise be to the name of Jesus. If the Lord stirs your heart and you're blessed through this ministry and you desire to give God an offering through this ministry, you can do that at thecrosswaychurch.com or you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. I pray you have a great day and that the Spirit of God fill your heart with great joy today upon what you've heard and that He would help you to understand even better, more better, what you've heard today. For I know when you do, 
It'll help you greatly. He's able to do it. Amen. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then. i